Over 40 years ago, when I was a newly ordained priest, I was assigned to St. Cecilia's Cathedral Parish, East Omaha. At that time, we had six priests there. Three of us were teaching in the high school and the grade school, responsible to going to the hospitals and other duties assigned by the pastor. You know, that famous line of job descriptions. Well, one of our duties was duty day. And what duty day was, on that particular day, any phone calls that came for help with rent or gas or utilities, whatever it might be, you got that phone call. If there was anyone who came to the door that day asking for the same types of things, you were the priest they went to. So we all took our turns. I always thought I had more duty days, but I don't know. It's just they were so full. You had so many phone calls, and you had so many people coming to the doors. You know, the cathedral towers, you could see them from the interstate 480 when you're coming into Omaha. From downtown, you could see the cathedral towers. It was a real beacon in eastern Omaha in so many ways. And so as a result, I just knew that it was going to, my day was going to be full with that. And I, after a while, I started cataloging a little bit, and I was averaging at least two hours a day just doing that. And those interruptions usually came at inconvenient times, but those were what we were there for, to be available to the people. And they, they range in all kinds of requests. And yes, we had some people who were regulars, and there's others who were traveling through. And what it taught me was, as I heard the stories of so many different people, all the different things that happened to people that most people don't ever have an idea about. Now, in our parish there at St. Cecilia's at that time, like our parish today and many parishes, there was a group of people organized with what's called the St. Vincent de Paul Society. We have a conference here in the parish as well. That group of people would get some of the requests that we had. If people lived in the parish, they would go out two by two to their homes to hear the story, whatever it was, rent, gas, utilities, whatever it was and again, try to help as much as possible. And we priests felt so grateful to them because they were like the right arm for us, because they were helping where we weren't able to go out to do all of this because the request just kept coming in and they could go out to meet those who lived in the immediate area there as well. Well, here at St. Vincent de Paul, we don't have two hours a day of people calling us and meeting us at the doors. But you would be surprised how many people do call us. Now, a lot of calls actually from St. Vincent de Paul Society, where they parish. That's a huge number. You have no idea. Every day. But much more importantly, we have people coming every day, often at inconvenient times when you're running around, everybody's busy, someone appears, and we want to drop things because we want to help that person or situation. Weekends, nights, not convenient times, that's what we're here for. Now, we can help people with immediate needs, sometimes especially like with food. We have a pantry. We had a pantry, it's got a, in a, in a room where we've got the, the shelves and food there, and that's really good for immediate need. However, when we were building the Perry Center a few years ago, and we were talking about it, we talked about having an outreach center and talked about having a pantry. And we got questions on, say, well, don't you have a pantry? He said, well, we do. Well, isn't it big enough? He said, no. What do you mean? Well, I said, there's more people coming all the time. Well, you know, we should be able to handle that. But anyway, we decided to have an outreach center, decided to have a pantry. People question, it seems it's too large. We should be using it for other space and so forth. And we assured, they said, wait and you will see. We will build it and they will come. And they are coming. Our pantry is only open a few days each month now, M Monday mornings, Monday evenings. Got that worked out. The number of people keep coming more and more all the time. Yes, part of it is COVID. Part of it is that people think, well, yes, there's so many places in East Omaha, but there's also people in West Omaha northwest, southwest, in this area of the city, who have needs, whether it be rent, utilities, gas, 
or whatever it might be that they need. And I'm so pleased to see that even in this COVID time, we have such a large number of volunteers helping at the pantry. I'm very grateful. There's obviously so many people at the heart of what this is all about, giving to those in need. There's so many people in the parish who are generous as you are, many of you bringing groceries all the time. And we appreciate it so much. And we have many people who are just volunteers putting bags together because as you know, now we're not having people come in the building. People come next to the, the outreach center. And there, bags have been put together on carts. People can just drive up. We're not just making it convenient, but we're trying to just meet people where they're at so they can have what they need. That will not go away. That will only increase as time goes on. And today, when I listen to the gospel of the feeding of the 5,000 with the loaves and fishes, I can only think of our outreach center, our pantry, pantries and our different shelters across the city who are doing so much to help people who don't have enough for themselves. I think about how Jesus was there. He goes to an out of the ordinary place. People find him and they come by the hundreds and the thousands because they're searching for God. Oh yes, they're looking for cures. They're searching for God. And Jesus, as the Son of God, is so very aware of this. And now the apostles respond in a very human way. They just say, my goodness, Jesus, there are all these people. they got to get home because we don't have food. We have, you know, this is out of our control. And Jesus challenges them as he challenges us. He says, give them some food yourselves. And they say, well, Jesus, we've got these five loaves, these two fish. That, that's it. That, in effect, is probably their food. And how much have feed? A very few. But Jesus shows them how God works. By taking so little, he prays over that. You can imagine that basket of loaves, of the fish. And then he prays over it. He invites them to take it out to the people. He breaks apart the bread. He hands it to the apostles. They go out to feed the people. Doesn't this sound like what happens at Mass? Isn't this what happens at every Mass in the sacrament of the Eucharist? We take the small host, which, by the way, the Greek word for fragments that were left over, those 12 baskets for the 12 apostles, means host, the giving out, and they've received the fragments, the host. And that's what we have at Mass, the hosts that are taken small, tiny, and Jesus Christ himself, body, blood, soul, divinity. It happens at every Mass around the world. This is what Jesus desired as a sacrament, that you and I would have the privilege to receive the Lord. Now we know there's so many people not coming to Mass at this time, obviously concerned about the coronavirus, obviously concerned that they're for their own personal health, understandably frustrated because they cannot receive the body of Christ. And we cannot wait until they can return. We cannot wait till they finally are nourished again. And I also suggest today, as I mentioned at the beginning of the homily, about the needs of us around Omaha and beyond, that we would be aware, yes, keep bringing the grocery bags, the food for our pantry. Yes, those who want to contribute to the pantry or to the St. Vincent de Paul Society in our parish, or to one of the shelters across the city, it's up to you. But your generosity, what seems so little, what Jesus was trying to teach the apostles, becomes so much when it is shared, when it is given freely, when it is generously offered. 
And we don't always know how that's going to be used. And you might, some people are skeptical, oh, what do they use the food and for? And, and, and again, so many use it well. I was talking to someone yesterday who talked to me. He said, Father, I've talked to someone in the parish who had received help from the parish. And the person couldn't stop talking about it. So grateful for what had been given to them in a dire need situation. That is being repeated over and over, and it should be repeated over and over as you and I, as part of St. Vincent de Paul Parish, as we continue to be aware in the spirit of our parish patron, St. Vincent de Paul, to be aware of the people in need. Sometimes we feel like, what can I give? What little will it make a difference? It's amazing. Look what Jesus could do with so little. Look what he does at the altar with so little himself. Look what you and I can do what seems so small when we do it together. That's being the body of Christ. That is what God is inviting of us. So this morning, I just invite you to be aware of how God blesses us abundantly. And what we take for granted is not something other families and individuals are able to do. And that we recognize we are called by God to be aware and to teach our children to be aware and to be aware of how we can bring that little to become so much when we do it as a disciple of the Lord Jesus.